finally, after months and months of wanting to start this, welcome to the inaugural episode of My Path with Patrick Driscoll. If you don't know me, my name is Patrick Driscoll. I am a junior here at Clemson University, an aspiring communications major with a minor in psych. What I want to do after college is get into the sports media field. Um, the beauty with sports is the storytelling that comes along with it. And I figured a podcast would be a great way to get people's stories out because I'm all about that. I'm all for it. Um, I'll get into this later. But I realized that being a former member of the Clemson track team, I realized that all my teammates had so many amazing stories that no one really knows about. And I feel like this podcast would be a great way to highlight people's individual journeys to where they are now, whether it's Clemson athletes, any students here, or anyone even outside of Clemson. Um, everyone just has a really unique journey and I realize that it's really special to highlight how people got to where they were now. So that's, um, I'll get into a little about, a little bit more into that later. But for now, um, I'd like to briefly describe myself. So I was born in New York City. Uh, my family and I, we moved to Indiana shortly after, South Bend, Indiana. And I'm one of three triplets. Shout out to John and Ryan. They are my best friends. Um, miss them dearly right now. They're on spring break right now, which I'm pretty jealous about. But John and Ryan, those are my brothers. Um, did everything with them growing up. Uh, they gave me just my sense of comp competition and uh, drive and man, they've given me so much. Um, so shout out to them. Um, my mom, Kara Driscoll, she is my rock. She is um, everything to me. She has helped me grow into the best man possible. And along with that, Chris Chadwell, my stepdad. Um, after my dad passed away as an in when I was an infant, Chris stepped into me and my brother's lives and he certainly changed them in a very dramatic fashion. So I could go on and on about my family, my personal background and whatnot, but we'll save that for later. Um, so essentially I want to explain to you my brief college journey, just a recap as a whole before I highlight others. Um, it's college has definitely been quite the ride for me. Um, so if we go back to COVID, let's see, basically three years ago now, which is absolutely insane. I was looking at my Snapchat memories the other day and it was like three years ago today. And I was recording a video in one of our, fa me and my brother's fa uh, favorite Mexican restaurants called La Esperanza in South Bend. And I vividly remember recording the whole entire restaurant and no one was in there. At this point, everyone knew what COVID-19 was, but school wasn't canceled yet. And we were sitting in this restaurant and we were just like, what is going on? So basically COVID-19 happened three years ago. Um, I was a senior in high school at the time and I just had no idea what I was doing. I was, um, I didn't know what I wanted to study. I didn't know where I wanted to go to school. Um, the only thing I knew was I was going to be a regular college student. I wasn't planning on playing sports. Uh, I was thinking of business. I was thinking of being a stockbroker. I don't know. I was just trying to get money. I was thinking of real estate. I was thinking of everything but sports media, which is ultimately my passion now. But I just wasn't aware of, um, just what I wanted to do in life yet. And that was totally fine. And COVID happened and it just completely changed my life in so many different ways. Um, just in the middle of COVID, just something like, you know, all of us during COVID, we had nothing to do. And um, essentially just all of that built up time of doing nothing, um, it was just insane. I was waking up at 3 p.m. I was going to bed at 7 a.m. All I would do, it felt like, was just 
sit in the basement, eat and play video games. And it was just repeat, you know, we still had school, but for teachers, it was really hard for them to plan what they um, really wanted us to do. And yeah, it was a really tough time for me, if I'm being honest, especially the first couple months. I just lost my senior year of track and had really big plans for it. The past two years were really successful for me. Um, in the 400 meters, I really wanted to take the conference by storm. I really wanted to break the school record in the 400 meters. And we had a really good relay. We made states the past two years in the four by 400 meter relay for Coach Mike McCarthy at good old St. Joe Indians. Um, and yeah, we had big plans. Also for the four by 800 meter relay, we had a really solid squad coming along. I also wanted to run the 800 meters individually for a couple meets, especially the city meet. We were projected favorites for that one. So just losing track too was really hard for me. Uh, many high school seniors just lost so many things. And it was just a really tough time overall. While it was fun, you know, I felt like all we did was just go and play golf and go to high school graduation parties. In reality, looking back at it, it was, it was a pretty crazy time, but um, moving on. So I mentioned, I didn't know what I wanted to do with college after. And what I ended up doing was, I was planning on going to IU. And then last second, I got off the wait list at Clemson University. It was like May 30th, there's something crazy like that. And when I got accepted, you know, usually you get the whole congratulations, on so-and-so, but my message, it was more of a, Patrick, we regret to inform you. That's what the email started with. But as I kept on reading, it said, we regret to inform you, we don't have space for you in August. But there is an option to start school in January at Clemson University. So if you accept this offer, you will start school in January, 2021. And I was like, all right, I'm all in let's do this thing so i um so i accepted that and obviously i didn't have anything to do for the fall so while everyone moved into college for their first semester i stayed back home in august 2020 it was just me um a couple of my friends are still home which is great but it was just me so what i decided to do was stay home i worked at the local country club it was awesome sometimes <laughs> i worked at the local country club i stayed home i took 15 credits worked about 35 hours a week and it was just school and work and the school side went horrible for me it was terrible it was almost all online the only class i really did well in was my in-person class i did okay in two other classes and i failed the other two classes it wasn't good. I was very, very lazy this period. Other than showing, I would do the bare minimum at work and I would do the bare minimum for school and that was it. I was on Snapchat watching everyone else have fun and I thought my life was so unfair and whatnot because I wasn't going to school. But in reality, I was blessed to stay with an amazing family. Just, it was just me, my mom and my stepdad. Um, and looking back on it, I really cherish that time because my mom and my stepdad, Chris, they really took care of me. They always made sure I had a meal waiting for me when I got home after dinner and stuff like that was just looking back on it. I wasn't appreciative, appreciative of it enough. And I really thank them for that. But finally, everyone got home for break. All my friends got home for break. My brothers got home and it was almost time for me to go to school. So here comes January, 2021, January 2nd, I'm in Clemson. I am with my family two days later after they moved me out, finally, I'm alone. And I was so excited. COVID was starting to become a little bit of a problem again, but no matter. I was finally independent. I was finally on my own. I was finally able to enjoy the college life. And 
I kind of took it a little bit too far for sure my first semester. Um, so what I did was obviously I, I wasn't playing sports. So I did what most kids like me do and I rushed the fraternity and it was through Zoom and the whole process was really fun. It was pretty stressful, believe it or not. Um, but fraternity rush is a very stressful thing. You know, you have a whole week to just like present yourself in front of a bunch of guys you don't know. And thankfully the whole process went really well. I found a fantastic fraternity, which I'm still a member in now, um, Clemson Beta Theta Pi. That is a fraternity I belong in right now. And I'm the current chaplain and well wellness chairman there too, which has been awesome for me. But yeah, I found a great fraternity my freshman year. And other than that, that was it. I didn't care about school. Everything was online. Oh, I had a 9.30 class? Oh, I can just turn on my Zoom and stay in bed. Oh, I have an 8 a.m.? Oh, I don't need that 8 a.m. I can just watch all the lectures on my own. And that was the mindset I kind of had, and I paid the price for it. I paid the price big time for it. It was the worst GPA I ever had. And by the end of the semester, other, other than meeting just a bunch of new great friends who I currently, um, shout out Sam Crane and Henry Oliver, my current roommates. I met them through beta in our pledge class. Um, so many great guys I could go on and on for, but if I didn't have Clemson beta, I would have looked back on that semester and just called it an absolute failure because looking back on it, I did take two academic forgivenesses. It was the worst GPA I ever had. And I couldn't even tell you where Bracket Hall was, if I'm being honest. I could not tell you where Bracket Hall was because I never really left my dorm for academic purposes. Everything was online and um, other than COVID testing or just going core for dining hall, like basically that's what it felt like and downtown, of course. But uh, that's a whole separate thing, but the first semester is definitely is definitely weird. It was something it was a lot. I had a lot of fun. I experienced a lot of new things. I went out a little too much and I paid the price for it. But I got to experience a lot of new things. I got to meet so many great people. And if not for that, it, like I said, it definitely would have been a failure. So when April 2020, 20, April 2021 came along, that's when I kind of had that moment of realization. And I was like, Patrick, what did he just do? Your grades are terrible. You know, like um, I got super out of shape. I probably ate cookout more times than I worked out, if I'm being honest. And I was just looking at myself in the mirror. I'm just like, what happened to the old me? What happened to the motivated me? What happened to the me who could just take on anything and no sweat, whether it's school, clubs, sports, I felt like that me was gone. And I was curious because, you know, I mentioned how I didn't want to play sports in college, but uh, there was just one day I went out to the intramural fields and I just ran some, I just ran some sprints <laughs> it sounds so corny, but I just ran some sprints and I, it just made me so happy to just go out there and break a sweat and run uh, some laps around the track. And I started to get really curious. And what happened was um, I told myself, I made up this whole scenario in my head that I was going to walk on the Clemson track team. And if I told anyone that in a moment, they probably would have looked at me like I was psycho. So... I looked up the roster. I was looking up everyone's names. And it's funny because some of those guys are my best friends now. But I was literally looking up everyone's names, looking up their times. And I saw on the mid-distance side of things, they needed some help because their numbers were depleted due to COVID. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to train all summer and make this Clemson track team. This will turn my life around. This will help me. And that's what I did. Every single day in the summer, Sunday's off, but it was just work. 
It was running, it was weightlifting, it was eating clean, it was taking care of my body, and it was a fun summer. I still had a good balance of things. Um, but yeah, that was the summer of 2021. And I worked hard day in and day out. And um, I ran an 800 meter time trial two times. And the first one, I ran a 201. And I was like, one month in training and you did that, let's keep ramping it up. So I knew I could have a legitimate shot if I kept working and I brought it down to two flat and I reached out to the head coach of the team, Coach Elliott, a man I owe so much to. And I reached out to him through an email and he never picked up, he never responded. And I started freaking out because I'm like, I did all of this work you know, to run like a semi-decent time and he's just never gonna respond. And I was just desperate. I already got the school at this point. It was, um, it was early August and like August 10th, August 11th, August 12th, something like that. You know, Sam Geringer, a current member of the track team, he, um, he had an Instagram takeover actually <laughs> on Clemson's official account and he's like do you have any questions and I typed this whole paragraph to him about it and um yeah I typed the whole paragraphs like trying to introduce myself and trying to get a walk-on spot no response but thankfully coach Elliot's phone number was on the account and that's where I got lucky um his phone number is on the team's website and I reached out to them through text and um, basically just explaining myself, my situation, my times. And he responded pretty fast, actually. So he said the times were in the ballpark, but we can arrange it a meeting. And bam, just like that, I'm trying to get into Jervie Athletic Center, probably looking like some kid who doesn't belong there, having a meeting with Coach Elliott. And the meeting went really well. He offered me a tryout. And he said, I'll give you a week to get ready. So one week later, Henry Oliver was driving me on the moped to my first tryout. And um, to kind of get through this a little quicker, the tryout went well and I made the team. And the moment was just so special for me, especially my tryout was three days after my grandpa passed away. And just to hear that news, um, that I made the team, I just felt like I was just so happy. I was so happy. And um, I wish I could go into the season a little more in detail, but um, to summarize it, it was a very special season, regardless of what I thought about it. It was a very special season, you know, um, just being a member of the mid-distance group with Aman and Therese and Carson and Cam and Gooley and Frosty and Leah and Bryn and everyone and Devin. It was really special. Um, Coach Elliott really shaped me into a man, I feel like, uh, whether it's the Isquina runs or the SO Hills or the Tuesday track workouts or even just the mileage days, Billy in the weight room, um, just getting Learning how to take on that adversity day in, day out as someone transitioning back into the sport was really special for me. And I got to build a lot build a, a lot of relationships um, that I still hold close to me this day. And I'm really thankful for it. Um, but if we could if we could fast forward all the way till now. Let's fast forward to now. Right now I'm currently not an active member of the team anymore um, unfortunately I was let go in August of 2022 and it was really devastating for me at the time um, but you know sometimes things aren't just meant to be I guess and um, looking back on it I was just so grateful to even have the opportunity to suit up for Clemson like coach Elliott made my dreams come true 
and it was something I would never trade, ever. All the experiences, all the relationships, just competing for Clemson was such a blessing, really. Um, and it was a really special time. It really was. But I got let go of the team in August, and I was devastated. I really wanted to do another tryout, and I never got that opportunity. But that's okay because, you know, um, college sports, if you don't know, it's very serious, especially at the Division One level. Any level, it's serious. But a school like Clemson, it's a business. And my times just, they weren't good enough. They weren't good enough, if I'm being honest. And um, looking back on it, you know, I was so upset, but now realizing it, like, it made sense for sure. They just didn't have the room for me on the roster and that's okay. I went out there and I gave it my all. So being cut from the team, I just didn't know what to do. All I knew was running. All I knew was trying to get better. All I knew was I want to run this 800 meter time. All I knew was work like my clean form, you know, all I knew was just the endless cycle the repetitive cycle, um, sometimes the stress, um, just a lot of it was, I just felt like kind of a robot, honestly, <laughs> by the end of uh, the season last year. And now that it was gone, I was like, okay, well, what do I do now? And that's where broadcasting came in. I mentioned my grandpa earlier, but he always said he always wanted to see me on ESPN as a broadcaster. When I was younger, um, you know, life, all I cared about was, <laughs> you know, who the Vikings running back was in 2005, stuff like that. I was a sport fanatic and um, he realized it and he was like, Patrick, you gotta be a sports broadcaster. And I was just like, nah, grandpa, like I'll do something else. But, um, Thankfully, I found out an organization called Tiger Vision and I joined, I went to the interest meeting and I was like, this stuff is awesome. So I got thrown into that and became pretty heavily involved with Tiger Vision. And uh, as the semester progressed on, I was able to start my own TV show. I featured in many shows. Uh, I was able to volunteer for College Game Day, which is awesome. And thanks for Tiger Vision, it opened up a lot of doors for me. Um, uh, I had a UPIC internship last semester with the one and only Miss Wanda Johnson Stokes. Um, she taught me so much what it takes to become a really good broadcaster, journalist, or storyteller. And I had that, and it was definitely the best semester I've ever had. Um, it was a great balance of just, you know, all the things going on with school is the best grades I've ever had. Um, I was still running five, six days a week, um, staying fit, feeling good, uh, able to enjoy more time with friends, um, getting the beta chaplain spot. It was just a great semester. And fast forward to spring 2023, it's been a lot. <laughs> I thought I was gonna get back and just start my podcast right away. Mm -mm. taking 19 credit hours beg to differ uh, <laughs> so that's what I got going on now um, I started my independent sports coverage of Clemson account at All In With PD which is my absolute favorite thing to do by the way um, I started that in October and I really picked it up uh, in January um, feel like I'm getting a lot better at my craft and I have that um, training for 5k right now very serious training right now if I'm being honest uh, ran up those Clemson students know the dykes but we did some dyke hill sprints today and man <laughs> my legs are feeling it so I have the 5k training I have the chaplain position which I absolutely love we try to meet once a week uh, in beta to just check on everyone's mental health and just hang out and have a great discussion. I joined the Tiger, uh, Clemson's awesome newspaper, com uh, Clemson's awesome 
student-run newspaper. Uh, shout out to David Ferrara for just doing an incredible job with the organization. Um, talking about leadership roles, shout out to Marissa Caputo, Tiger Vision's pre GM, current GM right now. Um, and thankfully she was, luckily enough, she was able to um, give me the role of GM in training. So I'm really looking forward to what's come with Tiger Vision. Thank you to Marissa for that, uh, for believing in me. And I'm really excited for that. And yeah, so if I could summarize everything recently, the reason it's taken so long for this podcast is because I've, I've just been so busy and spring break starting in two days. So I'm really excited for that. Um, it'll give me some time to, you know, work out some things and get this episode out to all you guys. And speaking of that, so what I wanted to do with the podcast, I basically just gave you the most I could summarize in 15 to 20 minutes about my own journey and now it's time for me to get other people's journeys out so that's what I want to do with uh, my path of Patrick Driscoll I want to highlight people's journeys on how they became the person they are now because you know you look at someone and you judge them right away but you don't know what they've been through you don't know what they've done you don't know what kind of person they are um you don't know what it's taken for them to get where they are. And I want to just highlight people's stories. I want to highlight um, just everything about them in a really cool setting. Um, I think a podcast, obviously you see Joe Rogan and Barstool and Logan Paul and everyone's having their own podcast show. But it was, it was time for me to start my own thing. And um, whether it's Clemson athletes, like I said earlier, um, a student here at Clemson, um, anyone, anyone's welcome to be on the show. And I know it sounded like a little bit of rambling, um, but I just wanted to get the most out of my story as I could. And I wanted to let you know that it's never too late. It's never too late to do anything you wanna do. Go out there, work hard, believe in your dreams, and you never know where that can get you, because I certainly didn't two years ago. So that wraps up the first episode. Um, thank you so much for tuning in. I know I got some things I wanna work on and whatnot, but I promise we'll get there. And yeah, that's it. Um, Hope everyone has a relaxing spring break at Clemson, and I hope to see you guys soon with a guest to be announced. Thank you.